Hey guys, it's Jason. And today we want to talk about Bitcoin's hash rate. Now, this is part of the series I'm doing on the yearly review where I talk about all the stuff that's happened in the last year and historical, you know, inferences on what's been going on in Bitcoin since its creation. And this is a big one. The Bitcoin hash rate really shows us in depth, you know, not just back, back in the day it showed us, you know, how many people were, were mining with their CPU. And then it progressed into GPUs and then the FPGAs and then finally ASICs. And then it went into how many ASIC chips you could get on a board and then how many boards you could get in a data center and, you know, the power and all. It, it got so complex. And mining really, and I've talked about this in depth so much, mining has really, for, especially for Bitcoin and the larger cryptocurrencies, even Litecoin to an extent now, the, you know, Bitcoin has moved from a, you know, turn on your PC and use your CPU or use a spare GPU when you're not gaming, you know, and then it moved to the FPGA boards, which were around for a little bit. But now with the ASICs, you know, you could buy an ASIC board, but the, the you know, the, the buyer of sale, you know, and the mass of sale. So being able to buy, instead of one person buying one ASIC unit, you know, some guy that wants to build a data center that can buy 5,000, you know, boards with, you know, 20 chips on them each, you know, became hugely dominant of the marketplace. And so now we don't really see the small time guy mining Bitcoins. We see huge data centers owned normally by one person, you know, or, or by an, a venture capitalist firm or by, you know, we used to have things like ASIC miner who, you know, wanted to have like, the, I think at one point they said they want to have 5%. I was, I was a very large shareholder of ASIC miner at a time and I sold off and, you know, so, it's really interesting to see how all this, you know, progresses. And sometimes the best way to see, you know, how much computing power really is being used for Bitcoin mining is to look at the hash rate. So today, in July, 2015, of course, we're looking at 363 exahashes. Now, if, if you know me and you know my, if you watch and watch my videos for a few years now, you know I've never said the word exahash before. I've never, even when I referenced when we would go over a thousand petahashes, I'd say, you know, we're looking at the ability of having 2,000 petahashes. And all of a sudden, I'm using the word exahash, which it's mind boggling that we're at this point. Because I remember when I did videos and it was in the gigahashes and then the petahashes, or and then the gigahashes, the terahashes, and the terahashes were for a while. And I did a whole, you know, breakup video leading up to when I thought we'd get to the first petahash. And I did all this research into it. And now we've, you know, went, we've went right past the idea of a petahash. Now we're at an exahash. And, you know, for someone that was in here when Bitcoin was, when I was 14 years old, it just, it's mind boggling. Um, two years ago, we were at 222 petahashes. Just to give a little bit of reference, that's 1,635 fold in two years. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? You know, I just did a video talking about how Bitcoin every year, the price goes up on average about 450%. You know, so that's like 4.5 fold. And we're looking at 1,635 fold hash rate. And, you know, this really brings in to the discussion. I'll, I'm going to bring this up in a second, but I want to reference real quick four years ago, which seems like forever ago. Four years ago, I was a sophomore in high school, you know, and no one had really ever heard of Bitcoin. It, it really was very little. I, you know, I was there before it hit a $30 peak and then dropped down to $2. So, I mean, I remember all that stuff and it's crazy. But four years ago, we were at nine petahashes. And I remember before that, I remember when we were at, you know, the single gigahashes and we were talking about, you know, tetahashes and how, how when, when would we be at a tetahash? And then we got to a tetahash and I said, when will we be at a petahash? And, but four years ago, we were at nine petahashes. So, Here's what blows my mind. I, I'm sure it will blow your mind too as a viewer. It doesn't matter if you're an old time viewer. It doesn't matter if you got in a year or two ago. It doesn't matter if you got in today. Um, the fact is that four years ago, if we went back four years, the hash rate has increased 40,733 fold. I'm going to say that again. 40,733 fold way faster than the price of Bitcoin. Now this has, the hash rate has to do with, you know, we started out with CPU mining and then we progressed into GPU mining. And while, you know, the GPUs were good, some people were still CPU mining. I remember the days when I, oh my gosh, I remember back in the days when I used to CPU mine. Those were the days. And I, I, and I remember, you know, progressing into getting the GPU units. I personally never had an FPGA board. Um, I looked into them, but you know, I, I put most of my you know, savings into Bitcoin back when it was very cheap and so I didn't have money to buy these boards 
And then I remember the whole ASIC issue because, you know, we had um, Butterfly Labs and we had, you know, ASIC Miner. We had all these corporations and uh, the whole uh, development has really got fuzzy. I remember when we were at the 28 um, nanometer boards and then, you know, it got smaller. And there's just so much that it's kind of like I'm reminiscing, but I've been talking to people and like I'm reminiscing with them about this. You know, and even for the newcomers, it's still interesting because it's like, here's where Bitcoin was, you know, and we still have all of this to go. You know, it's kind of like when you look at, I've been watching this, uh, the Humanity, the Story of Us, the documentary series, and it's like, look at how far back humans started using monetary reasoning, you know, using gold or, you know, or, you know, trading those gold and keeping it in a vault, you know, for the goldsmith and the goldsmith will then give you a ticket, you know, and I think about this like happening like five or 6,000 years ago, you know, in basic forms with bartering and then as it progressed into just the forms of the currency that we have today, it's crazy, and I look at Bitcoin, and I, I'm thinking Bitcoin's only, you know, less than 10 years old. Where is Bitcoin going to be in 5,000 years, or where is currencies going to be in 5,000 years? You know, if you watch like the Star Trek model, they say you know that we won't have a currency that we'll just have this you know unison of shared goods, or you know, you watch some things and they say the disparity will, the disparity will get so bad. You know, we talk about the wealth inequality today, but imagine what it would be you know, when automation takes for. You know, there's just all these questions that kind of rush. And in my last video, I talked about the, the Bitcoin roller coaster. And it really, for those that have not been in mining since the beginning, the mining ecosystem has been the biggest roller It's been more of a roller coaster than Bitcoin's price. Um, the, the research you have to do, the, the coding and all this stuff, it's always been so fascinating to me. And I know it's been fascinating to a lot of you guys out there. Um, and it's just crazy, but I think the difficulty, you know, and the difficulty and the hash rate are, you know, one and the same. And I think that it's went up 40,733 fold, just blows my mind. You know, we're looking at, you know, 363 exahashes. And um, I'm just sitting here thinking, what's it going to be like in a year, in two years, in five years, in seven or ten? It's going to be crazy. And there's, there is a concern... And this is what I want to talk about. There's a concern among a lot of people that the mining is being done a lot by large-scale mining operations. And, you know, you, here's the thing, though. And here's where I gain disagreement. Gold is the same way. You know, gold is now, you, you can't go out to a river and find, you know, a nugget of gold. It's just not going to happen. You have to mine thousands of acres of, you know, soil and dig deep. And then you have to, you know, there's a long process, and I could go through it, but I'm not going to. I, I, I know how they do it. And just to find little tiny, you know, specks of gold that you can then get together and melt to make a bar that's worth millions of dollars, you know? And there's such a process. And Bitcoin's becoming that kind of extended, you know, really intensive process. The problem that I'm concerned with, and a lot of people are, is the same that we had when we hit the 51% with the pools, or even when someone has, you know, a pool has 10% of the mining hash rate of Bitcoin. And it's that, you know, Bitcoin is supposed to be peer-to-peer. -peer. It's supposed to be, you know, a peer-to-peer -peer, peer voting system. And we talk about that's how, you know, hard forks work. You have to have kind of a majority of, you know, users and miners and operators and node operators to kind of agree to hard forking the coin to, you know, say increase a block, you know, chain, a block size limit, which would increase the blockchain substantially on a data size, you know, comparison. And I look back and I think, you know, I remember when people, you know, used to post pictures of using a computer to mine. And then ASICs really started to take over. But everybody had an ASIC. Like, a lot of people bought one or two ASICs because they wanted to have the whole, you know, to say, I'm a Bitcoin miner. And now you just can't do that. I did a whole review of the little USB sticks that were the Bitcoin miners. And those were really more of a novelty item. They weren't going to make you enough Bitcoins to pay for themselves. They were more to say, hey, look, I'm a Bitcoin miner. Now we don't have that. Now it's all these large mining scale miner operations. And it becomes a fear. That what if a, a mining operation, even if they have three or four percent, what if a few of them get together and decide they want a hard fork Bitcoin? Now the counter argument, and I've talked about this before, is that you know we, we've all kind of set and said these are parameters of Bitcoin, and if they were to hard fork or not hard fork, but if say they were to try to you know double spend their coins, which we talked about how unlikely that is because of all these different reasonings in another video, you know it's just not going to happen. But it, it's concerning when these large scale mining operations. Um, for me, not because they have you know, the hash rate and the, the large percentages, um, likewise with the pools, it's that they have so many coins. 
you know, the Winklevoss twins pride themselves on saying they have at least 1% of all Bitcoins, which I think is great for them. You know, that's a great pride. They, they took a lot of their Facebook money that they made and they invested into Bitcoin and they're trying to do the Bitcoin ETF and all that stuff. But when we really sit down and think about it, when someone can hoard a lot of coins, it gives them what we call uh, manipulation control. And we see this a lot, and people don't realize this, and I do research into this, I don't publish it because it's for my own investment purposes, but we see this with the smaller coins all the time, people manipulating the coins through pump and dumps or manipulation of holding coins. And with Bitcoin, it's harder, but you have some of these large-scale mining operations that, yeah, they're selling, they're selling coins, you know, which affects the market because then you got to pay the electricity, they got to pay for the devices. But I guess I'm kind of counting myself as I say that, and I have this in my notes. The reason I counter that because equipment is upgraded so quickly. We're talking in four years, you know, we went from CPU mining to GPU mining to FPGA to ASICs, and now the ASIC miners, every about six months, there's a newer version that pretty much, you know, once they become online, that generation of ASIC miners come online, it basically makes the last generation and the generations before it obsolete to the point that their, you know, electricity basically machines, all, all they're useful for is the heat they produce because they're, they're never going to make enough to ever even you know, pay for the electricity of mining. So I'm kind of giving you guys a brief overview. I have some videos that if you want to go check out to kind of reference some of the stuff I referenced in the video to kind of give you a basic understanding if you don't know what I'm talking about, which is always helpful, you know, to kind of understand the background of Bitcoin. And I have tons of those videos on my channel. I, I really encourage you to go check those out. But guys, 40,733 fold difficulty in four years, you know, well, in hash rate, which I said they, they go in the same, but it just, it's crazy. It, it's reminiscing and it's also, you know, excitement for what's to come with Bitcoin. Thanks for watching guys. I'm glad that I can be your number one news in Bitcoin for video sources. I know Bitcoin Magazine and all those try to get, you know, your written, but I know a lot of you guys like to sit down and watch videos while you're doing, you know, multitasking. We all multitask nowadays. And so I appreciate you watching my videos. Have a great afternoon and live long for the Bitcoin.